I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley, the good-looking, intelligent one. And we're the Moron Brothers. Here we are again, a year later, second annual Moron Brothers Christmas show. Thank y'all for coming out here and supporting this. And in the middle of all that laughing, we might slip a little Jesus on you, because that's what the season's all about. We almost didn't make it here tonight, because a couple weeks ago, we went out in Frankfurt to film the Tim Farmer Country Christmas Show. We was going down that highway over yonder, and the sign there on the side road said, watch for deer. We start bird dogging, we don't hit no deer. We went down there about five miles, and there did see no deer. Saw another sign said, watch for falling rock. We all started looking up for falling rock and hit a deer. I'm glad to quit that quarantine stuff pretty much so my wife can come back in the house. But only thing I got to say about the Ukraine is it's caused a lot of problems with our president, Russia and Ukraine. Fighting. So our president's got an awful lot of gas on his stomach. He can't stop Putin. friend of mine in Breathed County and we was hunting down there and I happened to be down there when he was having their Christmas party up the holler there and uh, everybody up the holler was invited to the to the Christmas party and I went up there and after I witnessed that I came home and wrote that song but I know when, when I was kids they don't do it anymore they may probably they do down in the mountains but on Christmas men would get new guns and stuff and they'd go out and shoot them boy it ain't nothing like it used to be, is it? We was we went to school here, brother. This yeah. is where we graduated in high school. Lardo said it was the happiest six years of his life. That's enough. We used to knock it off. 
Dad gone it. You need to quit that line. He, he, I can't take him nowhere constantly lying. You know what, Brother Bill? I think he's here tonight. You know what he told you about lying. Where liars go, don't you? Washington, D.C. <laughs> anyway. Hey, we down there in Frankfurt filming that Tim Farmer show. We down there by the Capitol and these uh, them state, some of them state officials coming down out of the Capitol and a guy run up to him with a pistol. Said, give me your money. And one of them said, you can't rob us. We're two highly elected state officials in charge of state government. No boy said, all right then, give me all my money. <laughs> you remember that old custodian that worked here when we was going to school? He was a sharp old bird. I remember the girls' bathroom one time. They got into kind of a thing where they was putting their lipstick on and putting lip marks on the mirror in the girls' bathroom. Boy, he had a hard time getting that stuff off her. So we went to the principal, Zeb Blankenship, and he said, Mr. Blankenship, we got to do something about these girls putting that lipstick all over these mirrors. So it was a pep rally going on, and everybody was in the gym, and Mr. Blankenship gave a little talk to the young ladies about kissing that mirror and how hard it was to get off her. It didn't do nothing to make it worse. So the janitor went in there the next day and he cleaned the mirror off and he left a note there. He said, please quit putting lipstick kiss marks on the mirrors. It's hard for me to get it off with the same sponge I cleaned the toilets with. <laughs> that was the end of that business right there. <laughs> We got the... Uh, hey, see Tojo over? Yeah. I right, told you, look at him acting up over. Look at him. Tojo, him look great grandson. And a couple of weeks ago, he spent the night with us. And he was in the bed, and at about 11 o'clock, he hollered, Paul. I said, what? You bring me a drink of water? I said, it's too late, Tojo. Go to sleep. About five minutes later, Paul. I said, what? You bring me a drink of water? I said, I told you it's too late. Go to sleep. You have some water in the morning. I'm going to find me in later. Oh. I said, what? You bring me a drink of water? I said, I told you. You ain't getting no water. You ask me one more time, I'm going to come in there and give you a whooping. About five minutes later. Paul. I said, what? When you come here and give me a whooping, you bring me a drink of water. <laughs> When we was kids, now, Linda will remember this, Gene will remember this, Glenn will remember. When we was kids, we didn't have a lot of decorations for the tree Christmas time. And you remember threading up popcorn on a thread and, and stringing it for a garland around the tree, and they'd make popcorn balls. There at Mammals, we'd make a, a tinfoil star out of cardboard and cut it out and put it up on top of the tree, you know, and, that big stuff to us back in, wasn't it? Well, I wrote a song and and uh, kind of about that Christmas in the country, and uh, I had to put something in there that's kind of funny, so I did. When Christmas come to the country, what a happy time of year! Mom bake a jam cake, cook an old wild goose, there's hard candy everywhere. Little old sharecropper shack beam with happiness. Heard one Christmas that we'll never forget turned out to be the best. A few days before Christmas, Dad hitch a mule to an old mud sled he made. Go down to holler us kids and follow, spend most half the day. Hunt till we found the biggest and the fluffiest cedar tree by far. Take it home and trim it with popcorn, top it with a ten pole star. I was the littlest one that year Daddy held me way up high When I placed a star on top of the tree Something in it caught my eye it was a big old gray paper ball What it was, I couldn't guess Things warmed up on Christmas Eve It turned out to be a hornet's nest 
Horny for the buzz and the mama was a fussin'. One time my cousin on his right ear running hard as we go through the drifting snow. Had to spend Christmas in the barn that year. When things cooled off, Daddy went back in and told us to stay where we's at. Grab coats and quilts and mama's old Bible fighting hornets with his hat. That night we huddled together, keep each other warm. Mama read from the Bible about the first family that ever spent Christmas in the barn. Next morning we went back in, thought them hornets had froze. Mama started cooking up Christmas dinner, Daddy built a fire in the stove. All the kids started playing. Once again, the house got hot. Daddy took a bite of goose and he turned it loose. And run for all you got. Hornet was a buzz and the mama was a fussin'. One time my cousin on his left ear running hard as we go through the drifting snow. Had to spend Christmas in the barn that year. Well, we all still get together. Still go to mom and dad. Love to tell the story about the best Christmas we ever had. Now that night we huddle together, keep each other warm. Mom will still read the Bible about the first family that ever spent Christmas in the barn. Hornet was a buzzin', Mama was a fussin'. One stomach cut him through his underwear, running hard as we go through the drifting snow. Had to spend Christmas in the barn that year. There we go. <laughs> we do these songs about once a year, and it's hard to remember them. The work to them, especially say, when you get our age. Pastor Fugate here. Yeah, he is. I didn't know he going to be here. I'm telling you, that's an honor. Hey, yeah. He's Y'all ain't guy. never been to his church or seen mm-hmm. him on television. He comes on Saturday night. What time, about 8 o'clock or 9? Mm-hmm. 9? 9 o'clock, mm-hmm. Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Clay's Mill Baptist Church, buddy. Yeah. He tells it like it is, too. Yeah. He went up to Ohio preaching revival up there. He walked down the street, and the little boy standing there. He said, excuse me, son. Can you tell me how to get to the post office? The little boy said, yes, sir. Just go down the street two blocks, turn left, and you'll sit down there on the corner. He said, well, I appreciate it. He said, you know, it's nice, little boy. He said, I'm preaching a revival night over at this Baptist church. Why don't you bring your mom and dad and come over and listen to me preach? I'm going to be preaching on how to get to heaven. <coughs> little boy said, no, I don't think so. You don't even know how to get to the post office. <laughs> I think I got a grandson here. His name is Carson. He done got up five years old and was still sucking his thumb. Boy, that couldn't I didn't I couldn't handle that. I said, I'm gonna have to do something with this boy. He's gonna be trouble. And I told his mama, Daddy, I said, Look, you catch him with that thumb in his mouth, you smack his hand and tell him he's gonna swell up and bust if he don't quit sucking that thumb. Well, they did. And it was working a little bit. And every time I'd see him, I said, you're going to swell up and bust, boy, get that thumb out of your mouth. Well, we was going into the church over at Bethel where we go. And he was walking up through there with me where here come a lady in the family way. I mean, very much so. And she was kind of waddling up through there. Well, Carson got right in front of her. Boy, he was he was looking at her like a chicken does a worm. And she said, little boy, you awful cute. I said, uh, but if you don't mind, you're going to make me fall. I said, don't, don't you know what this is? He said, no, but I know what you've been doing. So he's over at that there church. There he is. See? Is he here? Carson here. I see Carson. Yeah, I see yeah, him over where I go. But anyway, the preacher yonder, he's over yonder at that church preaching, you know. He got done that first couple. He preached about three nights, and that third night he's standing back there shaking hands. A little boy walked up to him, held his hand out, and then the little boy laid a quarter in his hand. He said, well, son, that's awful nice of you, but why didn't you put it in the offering plate when it went by? He said, no, I want to get to you personally. He said, I heard them deacons talking. They said, you're the poorest preacher we've ever had here. Our pastor's here too, Brother Bill, I think, yeah. somewhere. I can't see nothing. Yeah, he, the, he, yeah. Looks, he goes over to West Virginia. He goes over and preaches revival. And a couple years ago, he was over and we went over to play music one night. And uh, 
there was this old man there, and every night he'd get there with his little grandson. Well, about halfway through sermon, the old man would fall asleep. About that third night, he got to snoring. Oh, and Brother Bill, he just couldn't take no more. He just stopped. He said, little boy, would you mind waking your grandpa up? Little boy said, you put him sleep, you wake him up. <laughs> I'll tell this on Brother Bill all the time. Might have told it last year, but Brother Fugate's here now. He'll appreciate this. We, uh... Him bats stick together. Yeah, we, uh... You know how them preachers, I love, boy, I love Brother Bill. He's, he's, he steps on your toes, and I think that's good. We need that every once in a while, but, yep. But, uh, you know how they are sometimes. They get talking, and they won't hush. Well, it has been several Sundays ago, but his eyes kind of gla glassed over there, and I was looking at him, and, man, he was going from one book of the Bible to the other, and I said, it's going on 1230. What's the matter with him? I said, I need to break his concentration. I picked up a hymn book, and I hauled off, throwed it right up through the church. Well, I accidentally hit an elderly woman in the back of the head with it, knocked her plumb out on the floor. I run up there, ma'am, I'm so sorry. Are you all right? She said, hit me again. I'll still hear him a little bit. <laughs> The Lord old kid, he was going to Sunday school one morning. His mama told him, said, I give him two dimes back in, the dime, was, you know. She said, you put one in church, give one to God, and after Sunday school, you can get you ice cream. So he was running down there. He's running late. Boy, he was running down there, and he dropped them dimes, and one of them rolled right down, went in the storm gutter. The Lord old said, uh-oh, Lord, there went your dime. <laughs> I remember talking about Christmas and church and stuff. I was in Sunday school one time. Burley comes up with the beating of stuff to say. Little girl stood up in Sunday school and said, Teacher, what's around yon virgin? Burley said, Hush, it don't amount to nothing. Daddy said, We're going by the King James Version. All right. She asked him one time, of course, the answer she wanted was God. She said, All right, does anybody know what's Stronger than kings. Bernard said, yeah, aces. <laughs> Brother Bill, right there at that church, Bethel Church, every Sunday somebody takes him home for Sunday dinner, and one lady known for fried chicken, one lady known for meatloaf, Lord old wife, Jeannie, I tell her, she's known for her beans. She makes the best beans in the oh, church. That's enough of that now. I'm going to give him the Baptist version. i do something. Anyway, the, she, so he's up there. He said, boys, I can't wait next Sunday to get to go home to Florida on Jenny. I know she'll have them beans. Boy, them good beans. She got to think about that all week. So I got to fix something to go for them beans. She found her magazine had a picture of big, pretty salad in it. She said, I'll fix one of them salads to go for them beans. Got all tossed up real pretty like that picture. She said, sprinkle poppy seeds on top of the salad. Jenny didn't have no poppy seeds, you know. Fitch's idea, he didn't carry them. So she got looking, thinking, looking around, found her a shotgun shell. I got a bunch of them around the house. She busted that shotgun shell on and sprinkled bucks out all up top that salad. It's pretty like that picture. Preacher come over and eat Sunday dinner. Well, the next Sunday, he's back up in the pulpit. And I said, boys, right should have been. Trim it. I'm trimming as I go. I said, boys, y'all should have been with me last Sunday. Went home, Lord, on Jeannie's, had them beans, and boy, them good beans. I was out there, and you true, she had pretty salad I ever seen in my life. Then I'd eat a big bowl of them salad, big bowl of them beans. No big bowl of salad, no big bowl of them beans. I said, I need to apologize to her, though, because I was walking out to my truck to leave. I bent down to tie my shoe. <sighs> and shot the headlight out of her car. <laughs> well, there goes the few gates. They leave <laughs> No, come on. All right. It didn't get worse, I'm sure. <laughs> we, uh, while we're on the subject of churches, when we as kids, the neighbors would come down and spend the night with us, and usually on Saturday night, we get up the next morning, they go to church with us. Well, one night they said, why don't you come spend the night with us? Go to church with us. All right. So we did. 
They was Catholics. We've never been no Catholic church. But, you know, we got up and went in there and we all went in there and sat down and here come a little boy down through there carrying some candles lit. Burley stood up and said, Happy birthday to stupid. All right, well, we'll get now. Let's do Brother Fugate's song. Holiday tree. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, the holiday tree, yeah. I've got to tell this story because it's a good one. I, I never will forget it was on a Tuesday morning. And it's fairly early. I think I'd been up hunting all night or something, but I was in the bed a little bit later than usual. Phone rang, and it was Brother Fugate. Well, man, I was, I was flattered he called me, you know. He said, our beloved governor is wanting to call the Christmas tree a holiday tree. One or two people complained, and that was enough to make him. And I said, well, it ain't no holiday. It's a Christmas tree. He said, I know it. We're all going to get together and go down to the Capitol building in Frankfurt on the steps. And we're going to sing Christmas carols about the true meaning of Christmas. And I need a song about the holiday tree. I said, well, when, when do you need it? He said, uh, Friday. I said, well, I don't know whether I can write a song in three, four days or not, and then learn it and try to sing it. He said, well, the Lord told me to call you. If you got a problem with that, take it up with him. <laughs> so I wrote the song. But anyway, Brother Fugate, thank you for this. In the last line of this song, I say, on Judgment Day, I'd rather be right than politically correct. And as a guy from Arizona got a hold of me, he wanted some bumper stickers with that on it. And I had a bunch made, but they didn't last long. We've been a lot of places playing music, seen a lot of things for sure. If it's a good Lord's will, gonna keep on traveling, maybe get to see a little more. Seen a catfish, seen a horse fly, needle with an eye that couldn't see. All I've seen about everything, but ain't never seen a holiday tree. Jesus is the reason for the season. He's always gonna be. He's the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, born on Christmas Day. Holiday is a holy day. It's a holy day for us. It's a day we celebrate the birth of Christ, and that's why they call it Christmas. politician telling the truth at least that's what he had to say thought i'd seen about everything but ain't never seen a holiday tree jesus is the reason for the season he's always gonna be he's the lord of the lords king of kings born on christmas day holiday is a holy day it's a holy day for us it's the day we celebrate the birth of christ that's why they call it christmas big one bro democracy where the majority is supposed to rule now they're trying to call christmas something else what are they gonna think of next on judgment day i'd rather be right than politically correct jesus is the reason for the season he's always gonna be he's the lord of lords king of kings born on christmas day holiday is a holy day it's a holy day for us it's a day we celebrate the birth of christ and that's why they call it christmas it's a day we celebrate the birth of christ that's why they call it christmas now 
Thank you, Brother Fugate. <laughs> you know, yeah, they uh, asked the told Joe there, and his Sunday school teacher said, you know why it's important to be quiet in church? <laughs> He said, yes, ma'am. These people try and sleep in there. I got a little squirrel dog, a mountain fire squirrel dog. I'm telling you, she is cute, boy. I just love her to death. My wife, Jeannie, said, you love that dog more than you love me. I said, honey, you know how much I love you. She said, why don't you ever tell me? I said, well, I was talking to the dog when I said that to her. But I give her a hard time, but she's uh, she's used to it. I seen a talking dog. You seen a talking dog? Yep. There we go with another lie. I was I was walking down the street the other day, and there's a sign in the yard that said "Talking Dog for Sale." I said, "Go on, I'm gonna check this out." I went up there and knocked on the door, and I'm walking on. The sign said, "Got a talking dog for sale." He said, "Yeah, it's him right there." When I looked down, the little old Jack Russell dog looking up at me. He said, yeah, I can talk. Here's a gift I was born with. We said when the federal government found out about me, they confiscated me. Put me in the FBI and the CIA, <coughs> made me a spy. So I've been all over the world. I'd sit at the feet of presidents and dictators and listen to what they had to say, and I'd report back to Washington. We said, I'm retired now in Hollywood, getting ready to make a movie about my life. I said, die, go on, what you want for him? He's $10. I said, how come it's cheap? Because he's a liar. He ain't never done that stuff. That'd be a perfect dog for you. Hey. Saw no. another sign in the yard. We was traveling over in West Virginia. We're in West Virginia now. And this sign in the yard said, boat for sale. Marlo said, I've been wanting a new boat. I said, let's go check this out. We go up there and walk up there and ain't nothing there but a wheelbarrow and a ride mower. Old boy come on poor and Arnold said, Your sign says boat for sale, but there ain't nothing here but a ride more and a wheelbarrow. Old boy said, That's right, and they boat for sale. I'm driving down the road over in West Virginia, playing some music somewhere. Billboard on the side of the road. I'll never forget that. Only thing it said was learn to read. I'm driving, I said, I wonder who they put that sign up there for. If you can read that sign, you don't need to learn to read. And if you can't read that sign, who cares? About that time, he said, what'd that sign say back there? <laughs> Talking about my little squirrel dog. Her name is Chigger. Boy, she's, she's something else. She was scratching at the back door wanting to get in the other day. And Jeannie was fooling with her keys trying to get in the front door. Well, I let the dog in first. She said, how come you let that dog in before you let me in? I said, well, I knew he'd hush when he got in here. <laughs> it's been, a, I think it was last year, might have been a year before. Come a pretty good snow down that river bottom, and every time it does anything, it comes a heavy frost, electricity goes out down there pretty much, but we didn't have no electricity. We had a fire going in the stove in the basement. And me and Jeannie, we liked to play Scrabble. And uh, we had a coal oil lantern sitting on the card table, and we was playing Scrabble. Well, the stove in the basement went to smoking. I went down there to check on it, and she did too. We both went down there. We come back, Chigger had jumped up on that card table and eat all them Scrabble pieces. And she left us little messages all over the house for the next two. I didn't know that dog would spell that good, boy. She could. You, uh. Yeah. What is it? That Life Mountain Railroad. You sing. That Mountain Railroad. Oh, and you do. Where'd my little girl go? You might be a good one. You do that one. Well, I'll try. Look here, we had a birthday in the family yesterday. Katie, my little great-granddaughter, turned 11 years old yesterday. We had, but anyway, I wrote this song about 40 years ago for, for her grandmother, <coughs> my daughter. Now she's a grandmother mother and a grandmother, and I'm a great-grandfather, and I'm 104 years old. And, Anyway, K. 
Katie was in school and the teacher said, Katie, can you smell mousetrap? She stood up and said, mousetrap, C-A-T. <laughs> Linda, I'm gonna keep my eye on you. We was playing out in Branson years ago and there's a woman on the front row of water broke. She wasn't even pregnant. I don't know what's the matter with her. I remember when she was born on a cold and frosty morning. All alone I stood there. Thank the Lord with the little prayer. I remember learning to crawl, fingerprints all over the wall. But she lit up my whole world, a little shirt that said I'm Grandpa's girl. Her very first day in school, brownish couch and t-ball too. All the things that little girls do, where'd my little girl go? Where did my little girl go? Tails and little pug nose, Barbie dolls and baby clothes. Where'd my little girl go? So fast the years passed on, turned around and she's almost grown. I guess that's the reason why. Now and then there's a tear in my eye. Well, now you see she's Grandpa's queen, prettiest one I've ever seen. Her smile sets my heart aglow Love her more than she'll ever know And if my life should end the day May God keep her, I hope and pray Still there's something that I'll never know Where'd my little girl go? Where did my little girl go? Ponytails and little pug nose Barbie dolls and baby clothes my little girl go. Happy birthday, Katie. We, uh, y'all yeah. sleep yet? <laughs> He's about put me to sleep. <laughs> Let's see what we're doing now. We Talking about the 50s IGA. Me and Burley was over there the other day, early in the morning, eating breakfast. And uh, Leonard come out of there and he said, there ain't been but two or three people in here. And said, I found this roll of $20 bills and this rubber band. Did it belong to y'all? Well, no, it don't. He said, well, the only other people that been in here was that uh, honest lawyer over there in Nicholsville. I can't think of his name. And then that, he's a politician. He's a reputable politician over there. And Santa Claus. Him's the only three that's been in here since y'all. Burley jumped up and said, well, it had to be Santa Claus because there ain't no such thing as them other two. <laughs> Honest lawyer and a rep politician. Look here, we had two of them Washington, D.C. <laughs> senator politicians down here in Nicholsville. I mean, Y'all might not have heard about it, but they were down here in town in that little uh, restaurant on Main Street eating, and they were sitting in there, and the waiter come by, and the first Washington, D.C. politician said, excuse me, could we have some more butter? And the waiter said, I'm sorry, just one pat of butter per customer. He said, well, we really would like to have more butter. He said, well, like I said, just one pat of butter per customer. Well, the other politician spoke up. She said, you must not know who we are. And the waiter said, no, ma'am, who are you? She said, we are two of the highest ranking elected officials in charge of the federal government. The waiter said, well, apparently you don't know who I am. She who are you? He said, I'm guy in charge of the butter. Is Goble Copley here? He's right over here. There he is, right okay. There. That Goble, he's ready. He now. is tougher than woodpecker lips, that man is. Bud ain't with him. Bud ain't with him. Bud well. ain't with him, but I'll tell you, Goble, good feller, he treats us right. We up yonder in the hiding. Hiding man. Kentucky. He cooks for us, boy. But, but he, I mean, his boy, Bud, he'd been out one night fishing and he's coming back and he seen these pigs over in the field and go said let's get us one of them pigs and and so they pulled over and he jumped out run over and get a pig 
and to come back and the farmer come running out hollering and screaming. They throw that pig up in the cab of that truck and they took off. Wasn't long here come the sheriff's cruiser up behind her. Flat lights, flashing, siren blowing. Bud said, what are we going to do now, Daddy? He said, don't worry. Said, here, set that pig up here between us. He said, here, put my cap on his head. So look in the glove compartment, there's some sunglasses in there. Put them on him. So look, there's a sweater laying on the floor. We'll wrap that sweater around him. They set him up there between the sweater and glasses and cap, and they pulled over. Well, here come that sheriff, and he had one of them little out-of-town deputies like Barney Fife, you know. He come around and throw that flashlight in there. Throw it in the Goble's eyes. What's your name? He said, Goble Copley. Throw it over in Bud's eyes. What's your name? He said, Bud Copley. Throw it in that pig's eyes. What's your name, boy? And they elbowed him around hard, and old pig said, oink. Little deputy said, well, I don't reckon y'all the ones we're looking for. He said, y'all go ahead and drive careful. But as he turned to walk away, they heard that sheriff tell that deputy, he said, you know, I know about all them copley boys around these parts, but I swear I believe oink's best looking one of the bunch. I got a good story on him. It's been a long time ago, years ago. Goble lives in Ashland, Kentucky, and him and his wife wanted to go to a big church Christmas play in, in Huntington, West Virginia. She had some friends up there. So Goble said, I love this woman. I'll take her wherever she wants to go, you know. And they went to the Christmas play. Well, it was a humongous church. Had a big balcony and a chandelier hanging out over the everything. It was beautiful. And they was up there for the Christmas play. Well, on the front row of the balcony was a bunch of young ladies. I think it was a cheerleading group or something. And right before things got started, one of them gals got kind of excited about something and fell out of that balcony and reached out and dived and grabbed that chandelier and was swinging out over the rest of the congregation. And the preacher run up to the microphone. He said, I don't want any man to look up right now. He'll be blinded. Gold says, I'm going to take a chance on his left eye. Me fingers holding up gold. <laughs> Lousy Christmas. All right, C chord. <laughs> this, this is a true story based on a true story. All this ain't true, but I wrote this song. It's been several years ago now. Now, some of them sitting over here is going to know where it come from. I've got a little Christmas story I'm sorry, but it's sad It'll either break your heart to Or make you scratch your head A few years ago on Christmas Eve Santa was at our house Must have been tired Cause he laid down for a minute on our couch Jumped up in a hurry Checked all his reindeer They flew off into the darkness They were scratching from ear to ear was the lousiest Christmas we ever had, one we'll never forget. Scratched and knit, combed our hair, we're not over it yet. Santa Claus don't come to our house anymore, don't care if we're naughty or nice. We're the ones that gave Santa Claus all his reindeer lice. They were late getting back to the North Pole, took them three or four days. Scratched and knit, the dog gone. They almost lost her way Santa Claus shaved all his hair off Shaved his whiskers too When they shaved the hair off All the reindeer Rudolph's nose turned blue Was the loudest Christmas we ever had One we'll never forget Scratched and knit and combed our hair And we're not over it yet Santa Claus don't come to her house anymore Don't care if we're naughty or nice We're the ones that gave Santa Claus And all his reindeer lice wrote Santa Claus a letter he called us on the phone said he'd drop our presents in the yard but he wasn't coming in our home every year on Christmas Eve out in the snow and ice he drops him presents in the yard cause he don't want to catch no lice was the loudest Christmas we ever had one we'll never forget scratched and nipped and combed our hair we're not over it yet Santa Claus don't come to her house anymore don't care for naughty or nice. We're the one that gave Santa Claus and all his reindeer lice. 
Now you heard our Christmas story. I told you it was sad. I know it's about the key, so go on and scratch your head. Boy, you gotta have a sick mind to write something like that, don't you? I don't know. We uh, we got the. I'll tell you what. This uh. Yeah, come up with something quick. Well. Before you put me to sleep. <laughs> he's so lazy. I gotta lay down next to him. See what he looks like standing up sometime. <laughs> I don't know about him, buddy. He's. I know one time I was over at his house. It's summertime, and his neighbor, he's a kook. He got a big, tight, high plank fence built all around his backyard. And uh, and I, you know, he was walking around in circles over there. His neighbor was, and he said, 13, 13, 13. I said, Burley, what's he doing over there? He said, I don't know, but there's a knot hole right there. If you get down and look through that knot hole, you can see what he's doing. I got down there, stuck my up in that hole. He rammed his finger through that hole, poked me in the eyes, said 14. <laughs> oh. Burley said, what was it? I said, look for yourself. <laughs> 15, he got him, boy. I got a little neighbor over there. He had a old man down the street, had a cat always running around there. And little boy was out there digging a hole. And old man was standing there looking on the fish. What's What's you dig that hole for, boy? So I got to bury my goldfish. He said, ain't that an awful big hole for a goldfish? He said, well, not really. He's inside your cat. I was talking to the county judge executive here, David West. I know a lot of y'all know him, fine feller. He's also a mortician. But... Uh, he was telling me that they had one of the most famous men that ever come out of Jessamon County down there at Betson West Funeral Home. And I said, famous, most famous man ever come out of the county? Yeah. And I said, well, who is it? He said, John Wilson. I said, John Wilson? I never heard of him. What? Well, why is he so famous? Oh, he's a famous songwriter. You ought to know him. I said, what's the song he wrote? He said, one of the most famous songs ever was. The hokey pokey. I said, the hokey pokey. He said, yeah, well, I never got him in the coffin. We put the right leg in, take a right. Ah! Oh, that's awful, Linda. <laughs> put the right leg in, shake it off. <laughs> Look here. We had a situation over at home here a couple weeks ago. This couple sitting there in the house watching television late one night. And I ain't gonna call no names, but but they was watching TV, and door bust open. A guy run in there and had a knife that long, and he run over to the lady and he stuck that knife up to her throat. Said, "Tell me your name for a key." She said, "Charlotte." <laughs> he jumped back and said, "Oh Lord, I can't kill you. That was my mama's name. I couldn't ever kill nobody for that name." He ran over that guy, throwed his knife up his throat, said, tell me your name for a key. He said, my real name's Ray, but all my friends call me Charlotte. You, let me ask you something. Ask me something. UK played ball today, didn't he? Huh? UK, did they play ball today? Yeah. 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 You know who they played? Yale. No. <laughs> you see what I, I deal know. with right there? I don't know who they played. I don't know who they played. They played Yale. No. I don't know. Yale University. They played Harvard. How's that? Good for them. <laughs> I tell you, who, who's Yale? <laughs> I ain't never heard of them. Well, I don't know how you how you do what you do, but I we was coming back from hiding this year, and uh, we needed to get gas. And we stopped at a truck stop. 
pulled in there. Well, me and Burley went to the men's restroom. Well, he went in a stall and I didn't. And uh, there was a guy in the stall next to him. He said, how you doing? Burley said, fine. Then the guy said, what are you doing? <laughs> Burley said, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> then the guy said, well, you need any help? I'll come over. <laughs> Burley said, Burley said, I'd appreciate the hush, mind your own business. <laughs> About that time, that guy said, Charlie, I'm going to have to hang the phone up. This guy next to me thinks I'm talking to him. <laughs> I tell you, that's some beatin' thing to happen to us out on the road. There's Lee Dale. Did you see Lee Dale? I didn't Lee see Dale's Lee, Lee Dale. Oh, Lee Dale's here. I seen him out there. You know, you used to work down there at City Service Station. Yeah. And um, Lee Dale was a little hard of hearing. And one day he had a air hose out there. He had a radiator they'd been boiling out. And he drove that radiator out there and blowing the air water off it with that air hose. Well, a lady pulled up inside the there and big Cadillac, big nice, you know, hairdo and all. She got out and was leaning over in her car there. And, and, and Lee Dale, he's a little bit hard of hearing. And he looked over and he said, Well, she must be cleaning her car out. We went on a few minutes, and she hollered over at him. Said, "Excuse me, sir, do y'all have a restroom?" Well, Lee Dale, being a little hard hearing, and thought she cleaning her car out. He thought she said whisk broom. Thought she one of them broom, you know, sweeper car. So when she said, "Excuse me, sir, do y'all have a restroom?" Lee Dale said, "No, ma'am. The last one barred it, took it with him. But you'll back it up, or I'll see if I can blow it out of his air holes." <laughs> I was down on the, it had been back the summer, and uh, I come in, been working in the garden, Jeannie, wife, she said, you're going to have to go down there on your dock, so them kids from Asbury swimming off your little boat dock down there. Looks like a bunch of girls, and I don't think they got no clothes on. I said, I'll take care of this. So I started out the door on the way down through there. I grabbed a bucket. I went down there. Well, all them girls, was young college girls, was in the river there swimming. And I come down. One of them looked at me and said, Old man, you just will go back up the hill. We're not going to get out of this water while you're there. We'll stay here all night. I took that bucket that I took down there and shook it. And I said, Don't pay no attention to me. I just come down here to feed my alligators. <laughs> What about the toilet paper song, Any Jesus? Jesus? All right, rip, let it rip, Chip. They filmed the video. We saw us thinking about things we did at Christmas time. In Sears catalog, Montgomery Ward's catalog, boy, that was big stuff to look through them catalogs, and there was always one in the outhouse, remember? Well, we filmed this video old 50s IGA, and back when they had that toilet paper shortage, that's the biggest thing I ever seen in my life. I said, I've got to try to figure out how to write a song about that. We just call it the toilet paper song. I was in a local box store the other day. Couldn't be people was acting that way. All in a hurry, walking around like this mad. I found out why over paper goods in my house was empty. There I stood, not even a paper napkin to be had. Then a skid load of Charmin rolled in out of the back Like feeding piranhas they began to attack Pushing in and shoving, even throw the punch or two Well them people wasn't raised in the country like me Rich man, toilet paper was a rich man's luxury Wrote this song, tell them other things they could do Use weeds and leaves and a handful of grass All kinds of ways to clean yourself New Sears catalog came out and we the uncle had in the summertime when the sweet corn was ripe, save every cob was a really good wife. Toilet paper to us, something that the rich folks had. With all the fake news in the newspaper, I don't get one anymore. Now that I got a good use for them, I think I'll get three or four. Stock market report, 
New York Times. National Enquirer will do this fine. Read about the royal family while you recline. There's certain things you don't want to use. Write them down, you won't be confused. Poison oak, poison ivy, and sumac too. One burly hates is a horrible thing. Stinging nettles, they really sting. Just about anything else out there you can use. Like weeds and leaves and a handful of grass. All kinds of ways to clean yourself. When the new Sears catalog came out, we was all glad. In the summertime, when the sweet corn was ripe, save every cop was a really good wife. Told his paper to us, something that the rich folks had. 80% of the toilet paper's made in China, so they say. Burley said that's how they all gonna wipe us out someday. Now you know there's other things you can do. Hope it all works out in the end for you. Be sure to wash your hands when you get through. Be sure to wash your hands when you get through. Toilet paper song, the toilet paper song. Boy, I'll tell you, I think when stuff like it hits the news, I know it's kind of, but it's funny to me. Things like it's funny to me. I don't know why. People's fighting, and they was over in Walmart, man. They was walking around all mad at each other. I said, dang on, I know these people. They wouldn't even speak hardly at all. But You know, I got a, a nephew. He's a deputy sheriff down here, down here in town, and and they sent him out when he first started on there. He hadn't been on there long, and they sent him on his first domestic call. And he got out there, and he, he called back, and he said, Sheriff, I got a problem. I got a situation out here. He said, what's the matter? He said, this old woman shot her husband because he walked across the floor while she mopped it. He said, well, did you arrest her? He said, well, not yet. I'm waiting on that floor to drive. <laughs> This, this state cop pulled this guy over. He said, what are you going so fast for? No boy said, well, I'm afraid I'm heading to the circus up in Cincinnati, and I'm afraid I'm going to be late. He said, what are you doing in the circus? He said, I'm a juggler. He said, you do juggling? He said, yeah. He said, I like good juggling. He said, you do a little juggling act for me, and I might let you go. He said, well, I ain't got nothing to juggle. I send all up there to the circus. The cop said, well, let me see what I got. So he looked in his cruiser trunk, his cruiser come out, they had three flyers. He let them flyers to hear juggle them. A little boy was standing there juggling them flyers and them lit, and that cop boy, he was watching him. Come on. This old drunk pulled up in there. Well, he got out and got to looking over, and of course he had the can't help it. Here he go. He walked over and he, he looked at that cop. Look at that guy juggling them flares and them lit. He seen that that cop. And he walked back there, opened the back door on the police cruiser, got in and sat down. <laughs> cop walked back there, said, What do you think you're doing? Old boy said, Hoss, you might as well take me to jail. There ain't no way in the world I can pass that test. <laughs> Talking about going down the road and stuff like that, I got to thinking about our old tour bus. I think it's still down there in Renfro Valley, and we put it on display there in front of the Kentucky Music Hall of Fame. But years ago, me and Burley drove that thing everywhere, especially back and forth to Renfro Valley. And we tried to get to Georgia in it one time. That's a mistake. I don't know whether y'all ever seen it or not. It's a 1986 Azuzu pickup truck. I built a bed on the back of it out of cedar. It's pretty. Painted it all up with a spray can. But uh, uh, them Tennessee troopers, they ain't got no sense of humor at all. And we took the back roads because we didn't want, couldn't drive fast in that old thing. And people was flying by, boys zipping by us, rude to us, honking their horn, waving at us. I think he's trying to tell us we was number one or something. But <laughs> we... Uh, Policeman got behind us and pulled us over, and uh, we got stopped, and we had to hustle up and fasten our seatbelts before he got up there, you know. He come, he said, sir, do you know why I pulled you over? I said, we the only one you catch coming down through here. <laughs> he 
He said, no, I see you boys fatten your seat belts, so. though. Oh, yes, sir, we always fatten our seat belt. He said, do you always run it through the steering wheel like that? <laughs> Shined the light over in his eyes. I said, sir, do you have any ID? He said, about what? <laughs> it was hot that night, and that police officer was fighting flies of some kind. He said, boy, I'm going to have to write y'all a ticket and take care of y'all. These flies are eating me up. What kind are they? Bernie said, the circle flies. He shined that light back on him again. He said, circle fly? What kind of fly is a circle fly? He said, the kind that circles around the horse's hind end. <laughs> he hit him with that light again. He said, are you saying that I'm a horse's hind end? <laughs> oh, no, sir, I would never do that. But now you can't fool fooling flies. <laughs> All right, then, here we go. You know, we got a... Well, I ain't gonna tell it yet. I'll tell it when I give it back to him. But anyway, I was up there at the park, and an old man walking around. I was up there walking for good health, and and the old man was sitting walking on the bench. Walking for good health. <laughs> And, oh, and he's old, a health nut. You can tell from looking at him. Oh. <laughs> old man. He thinks a balanced diet's a donut in each hand. This old man was sitting on a bench crying. You know, I thought, well, I can't just walk off and leave him. So I went over and I said, how you doing, old buddy? He said, oh, I'm doing great. Today's my birthday. I said, is that right? He said, yes. Yeah. I said, I'm 100 year old today. I said, 100 year old? He said, yes, it's. It's going to be a big deal. said, all my family and friends are coming over to my house. said, they have a big picnic and, and food and games and music and homemade ice cream and cake. I said, well, that's great. I said, what are you crying for? He said, I can't remember where I live. A few years ago, Blake Shelton had a number one country song, and the chorus to his song was just like this one. And I know whoever wrote that song had to have heard this song. I wrote this song 30 years ago. But it happened around Christmas time, and it happened to me and my wife. It's kind of a love song. I was home the other night, laying on the couch, watching Star Trek with a chew in my mouth. My wife jumped up and said, I can't stand no more. Every night you lay there chewing that stuff, spitting in them pop bottles and paper cups. Scared me so bad I turned my spit cup over in the floor. Well, she quit a fussing cause she started a gag. I said, that's all right, honey, I got a rag. She ran upstairs to cry and said, I'm a leaving you. I said, well, you can have every single thing I own from my fishing pole to my favorite gun. Except for my dog, and I can't give up my chew. Well, I chew the back, chew the back, chew the back, chew the back, chew every chance I get. Chew the back, chew the back, if I don't get a chew the back, I'm gonna have me a nicotine fit. Looked up at her with a big old grin. Back of juice running down my chin. Chew the back, chew the back, chew the back, chew the back, spit. Still with me over there? Go for it. It's past his bedtime. I couldn't believe that she'd really leave, but her bag was packed to go. Said she's gonna stay with her mama and daddy for a couple of days or so. I said if I decide to quit that stuff, all means to give her a call. Then she told me that she loved me and she kissed me goodbye, but she kissed me on the jaw. Now a couple of days turned into two weeks. I was running out of clean clothes. I didn't know how to work without a washing machine, so I washed them with a the garden hose. I was getting tired of eating beany weenies. Got to thinking how she looked in that blue bikini. And that chewing tobacco wasn't quite as important as it was. So I picked up the phone, we're gonna swallow my pride. 
didn't want to quit, but it was time I tried. And she walked through the back door with a big old chipmunk grin. I said, if you've been to the dentist, your jaw looks swell. And she smiled like a possum and I let out a yell. I realized that the back of juice running down her chin. Now she sits in her chair, I flop on the couch. She gets out a red man and I grab my mail pouch. First time in two weeks we were together alone. Kinda turned me on when I watched the spit. I had to go upstairs and get that blue bikini. Honey, will you put this on? Now we chew the back of chew the back of chew the back of chew the back of chew every chance we get. Chew the back of chew the back of we don't get a chew the back of we gonna have us a nicotine fit. Look at each other with a big old grin. Back of used to run in down our chin. Chew the back of chew the back of chew the back of chew the back of spit. This thing back. <laughs> now, you come to a moron brother show where you hear songs you don't hear on the radio. But anyway, they, they got this robot barber up in town now. When you walk in there, that robot barber asks you what your IQ is so he know what to talk to you about why he cuts your hair. First old boy walked in, robot barber says, What your IQ? My boy said 147. Well, he started talking about astrology and astronomy and the galaxies and all that stuff. He left, second old boy walked in. Robot barber says, what's your IQ? My boy said 134. That wasn't you either. We well, started talking about algebra and geometry and trigon trigonom trigonometry. Yeah. You're going to get hurt for this is over with. Some of, some of that stuff about numbers. He left. Third old boy walked in. Robot Barber says, What your IQ? Old boy said, 22 and a half. You see, you got your banjo with you. <laughs> Can't fool him, robots. All right. A few years ago, my granddaughter sitting right here on the front row. She's about 24 or 5 years old now. But she wasn't but about 8 or 10 at the time. And we was watching TV, and it was on Black Friday. I'll never forget that. And the news came on, and, and uh, it showed people fighting and pushing and shoving over Christmas presents. And I said, have you ever seen the like in your life? Sitting in line all night, camped out in front of them stores in the cold, and then they fight over them Christmas. And, and Savannah said, that ain't what Christmas is all about, is it, Pop Pop? I said, Lord, no, honey. It's just the opposite of that. I said, we're supposed to love one another and get along with each other. I said, and she said, well, why don't they know that? And I said, well, I don't know what we can do. Maybe we can try to write a song about the, the true meaning of Christmas. And uh, I come up with this song right here. <laughs> Christmas has always been a most happy time Thinking back on my childhood, a favorite of mine Lying in bed restless all night Christmas Eve Wondering what old Santa Claus had brought me Still see a red wagon underneath of the tree Here I got the new bike was special to me Slowly grew older, the true meaning meant more. Best Christmas present never came from a store. Oh, the best Christmas present I ever received came from God the Father the day I believed. He gave us forgiveness for the wrong we had done on the very first Christmas when he gave us his son. Hard candy, fruit baskets, goodwill in the air. Family would gather that time every year. All exchange presents, sing songs, laugh and shout. Best Christmas present, what it all was about. Oh, the best Christmas present I ever received. 
see came from God the Father the day I believe He gave us forgiveness for the wrong we had done on the very first Christmas when He gave us His Son Now as I sit and watch all the young ones play I thank God I still feel that old joy that way Tell them of the best gifts so they'll know when then Christmas will always be happy for them. Oh, the best Christmas present I've ever received came from God the Father the day I believed. He gave us forgiveness for the wrong we had done on the very first Christmas when he gave us his son. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Merry Christmas, everyone. Now, y'all won't be entertained. He dropped one of his finger picks. Watch, see what he has to go through to get it back. I can tell you now, that pick going to lay down there. Somebody else picks it up. <laughs> he pulled a muscle in his back one time, and his wife was out of town. There wasn't nobody there but him. And he was doing fine for a couple of days. She's going to be gone for a week, but he dropped the remote control. Mm -hmm. on the ground on the floor there in the house and his back was hurting and he couldn't get it he couldn't get to it well he got to talk to somebody on the phone they said well you need one of them grabbers reach and grab it good idea he got in the car went to walmart bought him one come home reach down there and grab boy it was handy he'd pick up everything until he dropped the grabber <laughs> went back to walmart and bought another how you gonna get that, brother? I'll get it when they sweep. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, see if I can get it for you. I wish you would. <laughs> about all I can do is sit here and look at it. <laughs> well, you thought I was kidding, didn't you? If I knowed you'd do that, I'd dropped it more often. <laughs> but. Most exercise you've had in the week. I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to. I got a little poem I want to read. We've done this last year, and it's a pretty good one. It's really got a good meaning on the end of it. And at the end of this poem, I'm going to play a silent night on the harmonica. And when that's over with them, get Brother Bill to come up here. But this is a pretty good little story I wrote. It's really got a good meaning on the end of it. When you get done, wake me up. <laughs> and probably half of them. It was the night before Christmas. All right. I can't see up close with my glasses on. I think maybe the good Lord made my eyes too good or something. I Let's see, let me get this. <laughs> get it all straight here. Twas the night before Christmas in the moron brother's house. Burley was watching SpongeBob and I was asleep on the couch. With no stockings to hang by the chimney with care, we tied up the legs and hung our long underwear. Then Burley woke me up snoring, so I was headed for bed while visions of donuts danced in his head. <laughs> the milk and cookies I put out for Santa was gone, and Burley had a white mustache, and on his chin there was crumbs. <laughs> then out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I grabbed the shotgun to see what was the matter. I worked the shell in the chamber. Burley sprang to his feet. Said, who eat the cookies? Don't shoot me, please. <laughs> I ran to the window. I couldn't go fast enough. I tripped over Burley to get there, and the shotgun went off. It blowed a hole in the ceiling. So I laid down the gun. I said, I'm sorry, brother. My brother was gone. 
The moon was abreast on our old tour bus outside, though it was falling apart. I looked on it with pride. Then what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and nine tiny reindeer with a little old driver shouting orders with strife. I thought for a minute it was Jeannie, my wife. <laughs> Let's see, where were you? More rapid than eagles, with courses they came. Then he screamed and he hollered and he called him some names. Now Dasher and Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid. Break it up, Rudolph, you and Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, all upside the wall. Quit messing in the yard, Lord, oh, shoot us all. <laughs> Come see this, Burley, hurry up, run. He said, well, I, I'd gone to the bathroom. Where's your shotgun? <laughs> Burley said, what's that we hear on the roof? I said, you ain't going to believe it. It's reindeer hooves. We both got kind of scared, then turned around, and down the chimney, old Santa came with a bound. He was dressed in fur from his head to his foot, all covered in ashes and covered in soot. Had a bundle of toys flung over his back. I think I saw Walmart wrote on the sack. He looked at the long underwear as if to say, what are those? And he grabbed Burley's pair and he blew his nose. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all jokes aside, that's fun and everything, but the greatest gift of all was given to us the very first Christmas. We've celebrated it ever since, a savior for all mankind. I thought how Christmas would be if Jesus came back Christmas morning for those that had accepted him in their hearts. But how sad it would be for those that had waited too late. It was the night before Christmas. It was the night before Jesus came. Let's see. It was the night before Jesus came and all through the house. Not a creature was praying, not one in the house. Their Bibles were laying on the shelf without care in hopes that Jesus would not come there. The children were dressing to crawl into bed, but not once ever kneeling or bowing their head. And mom in her rocker with her baby on her lap was watching the late show while I took a nap. When out of the east there arose such a clatter, I sprang to my feet to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but angels proclaiming that Jesus was here. With a light like the sun sending forth a bright ray, I knew in a moment this must be the day. The light of his face made me cover my head. It was Jesus returning, just like he said. Though I possessed worldly wisdom and wealth, I cried when I saw him in spite of myself. In the book of life, which he held in his hand, was written the name of every saved man. He spoke not a word as he searched for my name when he said it's not there. Uh, my head hung in shame. The people whose names had been written with love, he gathered to take his father to his father above. With those who were ready, he rose with a sound while all the rest were left standing around. I fell to my knees, but it was too late. I'd waited too long and thus sealed my fate. I stood and I cried, and they rose out of sight. I only had been ready on this night. In the words of this poem, the meaning is clear. The coming of Jesus is drawing near. There's only one life. When it comes the last call, We'll find that the Bible was true after all.
Where's Brother Bill at? Hey, come over here. Got Brother Bill, pastor. He's our pastor of uh, Bethel Christian Church. Ah. And give him that microphone. Okay. And take his microphone so he won't say nothing else. Kay Morrissey called. She wants to be poster child for Weight Watchers. That's enough, man. You're good to talk. Hey, I've been on day. If y'all looking for a good church, come out about three miles south of Dickfield. Turn right on 1268. The services start 1030 on Sunday morning. And uh, I'll tell you the motto of the church, I wear overalls. I lead the singing a lot. And you come as you are and leave different. Don't worry about dressing up, cleaning up. We want, we want your heart to be right when you leave there. But if you don't go there, Go to Clay's Mill Baptist Church, Brother Jeff Fugate. He'll take care of you, too. But I'm going to turn this over to Brother Bill Bales. Thank you, Bill. Boy, it's sure a blessing to be here with all of you and get to enjoy these two guys and the talent that God has blessed them with. Get away from the world and have a few laughs and enjoy being together. And uh, I just want to share with you very quickly, I remember being a little boy at my grandma and grandpa's house down on Grassy Branch. Big old white house, uh, still had a dipper full of water in the back. Yeah. Got to die of the well. And I remember my dad and his eight brothers and sisters and wives and husbands and grandma and grandpa born in the 1880s. You know, I don't remember color of wrapping paper my presents come in. I don't remember a lot of my presents hardly. I don't remember a lot of things, but I'll tell you what I do remember. I remember being in that house of people that I loved and feeling like I was loved back. There's two things I want to tell you about Christmas tonight. First of all, make sure you spend your time on your people and not on your billfold and paper and all that stuff. It's good to give. Sometimes it's fun to get, but the greatest thing that will ever happen to you is opening your heart and loving the people God's blessed you with. The next one's even more important than that. They're all gone now, except for Aunt Alice, all eight of the other kids. Grandma and Grandpa, when I was just graduating high school. But because of a baby in a manger, because of the Lamb that took away the sins of the world, because of Emmanuel, God with us, because of the Christ, I'm going to get to see them again. And if you love Jesus Christ and you have him in your heart and you believe, the one that God sent for you to pay for your sins, if you ask him into your heart, this won't be the last time we get to enjoy singing together. There's a day coming. We'll all come together. We'll never say goodbye again. Let's pray and thank him tonight. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we just bow our heads right now so grateful and thankful for a night that's been fun together and a feeling of togetherness you put in this room as we enjoy the talents that you bless these two men with and the love you put in their hearts for you. We thank you for their families and the friendships that you've created here. We ask you to keep us all safe as we go home, but we also ask, Lord, you let us shine on somebody else and help them through this year. Some people are going to have a hard Christmas. It's going to be different. Lord, let us be the light. Let us be the comfort. Let us be your hands down here. Bless us and use us and thank you for the opportunity. And Lord, we, we acknowledge that there is no God but you. Only in the name of Jesus Christ will every head bow and every tongue confess. And we thank you in his name, and amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. We're going to head out front here, and you can meet with us out there. Thank you again for coming. If I don't get to talk to you out there, but that's going to close our show right there. God bless you all. God bless you. Thank be you careful. very much, and Merry Christmas to you. We'll be out front as soon as we can get there. Y'all be careful. Y'all be careful driving home because we're walking. You are. <laughs>